Hey, so I wanted to talk about going to see Captain America Civil War because you know I had to go. And I had to go the day it came out. I didn't go to the midnight showing because you know what? I don't want to be around all those people late at night. And if I get too juiced, then I'm not going to sleep. Not that I sleep much anyway, but I wouldn't have slept. And I had a feeling I knew what was coming. So I decided to go this well, I might as well say afternoon. It was 11.40 a.m., but it was close enough to afternoon. Went to IMAX 3D because, you know, these are the types of movies I want to see in IMAX 3D. And I just got to talk about it. Uh, I could have done it yesterday when I initially saw it, but I didn't want to sit in the car and do another little really short video. This time I want to just spend a little bit more time talking about it. No real spoilers from me. There may be a little casual thing here and there, but no you know, big spoilers. I'm not going to talk about it, even though last week, for the last week, we've had all these spoiler videos because they debuted it in England, and then they had the debut, uh, what do you call it, the screening here in America. So there have been spoilers everywhere else, but I refuse to watch them because I wanted to see this bad boy. So here it is. So anyway, this was basically the story of... Um, taking a look back at all the destruction that has happened. And, you know, this is what we're about in the world today. This really touches upon it. You know, you have these heroes, these superheroes, that are basically saving the world. I mean, that's exactly what they're doing. But it causes a lot of damage. And then you have those few naysayers who say, well, maybe if it wasn't for them, damage wouldn't have been as bad. You know, you, you have these people. <laughs> and... So, in essence, if we didn't have anyone to fight for us, then we would have just been like slaves to these aliens or these bad guys from everywhere else, and that's just it, you know. In essence, give them your money or, you know, just make a slave of yourself because at least it won't cost too much. I mean, you know, this is the way the world is. So, uh, you know, Iron Man or Tony Stark starts to feel the heat, starts to feel a little guilty for some of the things that have happened in his name and with the Avengers, and so he sides with Colonel Ross. William Hurt plays the part of, of Colonel Ross. If you remember, he was back in the, uh, I think, the first Thor movie. Maybe it was the second, not Thor, my God, uh, <laughs> Hulk movie. I can't remember if it was the first or second right now. You know what? I think it was the second one. Yes, it was the second one. And so he's back, as now he's the Secretary of State. I don't know how that ever happened. But anyhow, now he's back, and he's saying that he's representing the United Nations, and they're trying to set up this thing so that um, you have a committee that basically tells the Avengers when to go where. And, of course, you have Tony Stark on one side with some of the people who agree with him who are saying, yes, we need to do this because we've been kind of rogue and out there and doing all these things. And then you have Captain America, our bad boy on the other side, who's saying, no, nah, I don't think so. And, you know, you have his his guys. And I got to tell you the truth. I I went into this knowing I was going to be on Captain America's side. That's just how that is. You know what? You, you get into this point where you just can't trust all these agencies. Yes, I'm a military kid, and I really understand this thing about, you know, loyalty and following rules or whatever. But I got to tell you the truth. If I was a superhero and I had, you know these strengths and there's these other things I could do. I ain't paying attention to all these other people telling me, you know, when I can do what or whatever. Uh-uh. Ain't gonna happen. Otherwise, I just ain't playing at all. I'm going off somewhere else. And then when the aliens come and want to destroy the world, y'all can call me all you want to say, nah, nah. Because they ain't gonna mess with me because I'm a superhero. <laughs> that sounds wrong, but that that's me. So anyway, you had these early divisions of things. And... You know, it just goes bad. It goes bad when the Avengers have to kind of go in to do something because our boy Bucky, played by this guy named uh, Sebastian Stan, I didn't even, I didn't know his name before today, um, gets accused of basically blowing up the United uh, part of the United Nations just as they're signing this accord that they call the Segovia Accords. Segovia Accords. That was what uh, basically that was the city that got destroyed in the second Avengers movie. So he gets killed, and there's this picture of Bucky, and so everyone's now chasing down Bucky. But our boy Cap is sitting there saying, hey, you know what, this looks a little suspect. And homegirl, her name is, is in the show, is Sharon Carter, and it turns out that she was, I think, what is it, uh, the niece, I think, of uh, Agent Carter, 
or you know, early on, Captain America's uh, first girlfriend, I think it was his girlfriend, fiance, something like that. Anyway, turns out that she, you know, helps Cap get some info on this thing and find out that something just doesn't look right about all this. So Cap is able to track him down. And okay, you know what? We're sitting there trying to figure out how did he track him down? But he did. He tracks him down. And here comes all the military and all these other kind of folks who are going to be trying to kill the Winter Soldier. And, of course, Cap helps him out of this mess. And then it turns into a major fight. It's a major fight. Because, of course, you got Iron Man and, and War Machine and Black Widow and a few others. You got this kid who comes in playing the new Spider-Man. And you know what? He was really young, and I'm remembering back to the comic books, the old comic books, where uh, um, Spider-Man was actually, he was a kid, and then you had Tobey Maguire playing Spider-Man. He was a little older, but he was still young. You know, he could play college, but he couldn't play kind of, you know, this kid. This was really a kid. Uh, <laughs> and he's not in the movie long, but during the parts he's in the movie, he's really entertaining. So I understand there's going to be a movie coming out with him. I think that would be kind of fun to watch. I, I really, he, he really is this kid. So anyhow, you've got this big battle, and now uh, Bucky tells this story, uh, you know, says one him, he tells this story about these other Winter Soldiers that had been created, and so he and Cap are going to go to Russia to basically try to kill these things. And, it, you know, you have this battle at the airport which was the scene of the movie. I mean, it really was. Um, you could talk about the scene, and I can mention these things because these were in the commercials. You could talk about the scene where Bucky and Cap are going after Iron Man at this one point, and that's actually kind of cool, but the scene at the airport was something else. Uh, it just was. And I got to tell you, I didn't see the Ant-Man movie, but this guy's kind of entertaining himself. So I might have to go back and, and rent that bad boy or buy it and watch it because I never saw that. Um, and of course, I didn't realize, you know, I hadn't really put this together, but Scarlet Witch, who's played by Elizabeth Olsen, who, in my mind, I kept saying, boy, why does she look so much like the Olsen twins? Well, because she's the younger sister. That kind of makes sense. Only she's the hotter younger sister. Yeah, I said it. Anyway, it never really occurred to me. I never put it in my mind that one of those stones is how she got her powers, because you got Vision who has one of the stones in him. And so I was sitting there trying to say, how come he can't just dominate everything? Well, because she also got power from a stone. So it turns out they're actually kind of equal. She's actually got a little bit more power than him, which was kind of interesting because his is embedded in his head. But I thought that was kind of cool. So anyway, you had all these factions fighting each other. It's the coolest thing uh, at the airport. And basically, you have this loose cannon guy who basically is the one who sets everything up and gets everyone fighting with each other and that's kind of cool um so uh but you have that we have the introduction of the black panther thing and i gotta tell you the way that people were talking about it after the second avengers movie i thought it was going to be one of the characters who was in that movie who was going to going to become black panther because i'm not familiar with the comic books because we didn't have those comic books when I was a kid. You know, we didn't have any black people in comic books back then. So, anyhow, this guy turns out to have been kind of the prince of this country. And now he's, you know, risen up to the king of the country. His dad is the one who gets killed. His, his dad who put the, together the thing. And so now he comes out and he's Black Panther. And he's got, his suit is made out of the same stuff as the shield for Captain America. So, you know... He's hard to kill, too, which turns out to be lucky for him. Um, and it, it, you know what? This was an exciting movie. That's as far as I'm going to go with it. Um, this movie, it was, you know, the sound was great. The, the scenes were great. Like I said, there were a couple of parts here and there where you're saying, okay, you know, that's a little thrown off. But I really enjoyed this movie. Of course, I'm the guy who enjoyed... <laughs> <laughs> the Superman Batman movie. So you don't necessarily have to listen to me on that, but a lot more critics have actually enjoyed this movie than the Superman Batman movie. You know, Mitchell don't go to movies that I think I'm not going to like. And the audience uh, seemed to gasp and laugh at the right times. There's a lot of humor in this movie. I actually, you know, think that that's really the fun part. 
of some of these movies where they say certain things and it's just, you know, kind of comical at those times. And uh, the tension between, uh, you know, Iron Man's character and Captain America's character, you know, in this movie. Um, it was interesting because, you know, everyone kept saying that, well, they're supposed to be friends, whatever. Who doesn't remember that they battled in that very first movie with each other over, you know, Loki and Thor, and then they battled in the second movie, you know, because Tony Stark kept doing all this stuff without telling anybody he was doing it, and it all kept messing up. So these weren't necessarily best friends. And I got to tell you, this this thing with uh, Captain America, and I keep calling him that because right now I'm blank as to what his other name is. <laughs> I'll just own up to it. You know what? You get 56, almost 57, and try to recall everything. You just can't do it. I knew, I'll know it as soon as the video ends. Anyway, you know, the thing I really like most about Captain America is that this is a loyal guy. But he's got his honor about it. So he's got his friend, uh, you know, Bucky. He knew as a younger kid, even though they're both over 100 now. But still, you know, he knew them way back when. He sees this, this heart in this guy. He realizes the guy has had his mind messed up. And so he's going to stick with his friend. He's going to do what he can to help his friend. And then his friend comes back and is very loyal to him. And I said, you know, that's my thing. I mean, my number one uh uh, moral, if you will, is loyalty. Loyalty is my number one friend. Uh, uh, moral. So I really love that. And by the way, this here is a giveaway. I'm sorry. It's just got to be a giveaway, but it's not my fault. Um, leading up to this movie, everyone was talking about Civil War, the comic book, because I didn't realize there was a comic series. Why would I? Remember, I'm an old guy. I haven't seen comic books in a long time. And I guess in the comic book series, um, Captain America gets killed in the movie, and, or in the book. Captain America gets killed, and then Bucky becomes the new Captain America. And there were a lot of people who were speculating that he was going to get killed in this movie because he supposedly had a picture deal for so many pictures, and they said that, you know, this would probably be the end of it because he made a couple of cameos, and they said if those counted, then this would be his last movie. And I was sitting there thinking, how can you kill Captain America? Wait, wait, what? I mean, I know, okay, so it happened in the comic book. Could this happen? No, they don't kill Captain America. There are some interesting things that happen in this thing, but you know what? Yes, I'm giving this away. Nobody gets killed. Some people get hurt really badly, but no one gets killed. That's my, my phone telling me to medicate. So you know what? I'm done. I'm telling you to go watch this movie. Have a lot of fun with it. And I'm going to go medicate because my alarm just told me to do so. So, y'all take care. Like I said, this is just a quick movie. Okay, you know what? This is end up being 13 minutes. Go see this. Let's talk about it. Y'all take care.